The term autorotation is generally used in relation to helicopters, but autorotation applies to aeroplanes as well, and here's how it works. In flight, the wing generates lift at a right angle to the relative airflow. The relative airflow acts in the opposite direction to the wing's direction of flight. The angle of attack forms between the relative airflow and the wing's cord line. In flight, wings move up and down, sometimes due to wind gusts or due to the pilot's intentional actions when manoeuvring. As one wing drops, the relative airflow strikes it from below and its angle of attack increases. The upgoing wing, conversely, has its angle of attack decreasing. In normal flight, the increasing angle of attack of the dropping wing causes it to develop more lift. Conversely, the reduced angle of attack of the rising wing reduces lift. This effect helps the wings roll back to level flight. In stalled flight, however, the increasing angle of attack of the dropping wing causes it to stall more and reduce lift. When stalled, the dropping wing continues to further drop and the rolling motion of the aeroplane continues automatically. This is referred to as auto-roll. Here's another look at these effects on a graph. This graph represents the lift and drag curves against the angle of attack. In normal straight and level flight, both the left and right wings generate the lift and drag. When the aeroplane rolls, the dropping wing generates more lift and it generates only a little bit more drag. In stalled flight, however, the dropping wing not only experiences reduced lift, causing it to continue to roll, but it also experiences significantly increased drag, causing the aeroplane to yaw in the direction of the roll. This is called auto-yaw. In a stalled state, the rolling and yawing cycle is self-sustaining. This condition is known as auto-rotation, and it forms the basis of a spin. We will discuss spinning in another video. Thanks for watching.